Good morning, Utsav. I trust that you are all doing well by the grace of God. We all are faced with one of the greatest pandemics of all time, the COVID-19. This pandemic has brought the whole world to its knees, with people succumbing to it by the thousands, businesses shutting down, people being laid off from their jobs. There's an uncertainty that is looming large over our nation and over the whole world. It's a complete global economic meltdown. However, in the midst of all that is happening around us, I would like to encourage us to continue to look to the Lord and His Word. You know, the Bible is a book full of promises. Scholars say that there are more than 5,000 promises in the Bible. So a rough calculation would suggest that since there are 8,760 hours in a year, that's 365 days into 24 hours in a day. Hence, there's a promise for us for every two hours of our life. Isn't that incredible? The book of Numbers 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? You know, beloved, one of God's character is that he is faithful. He is true to his word. Always does what he says in his word. God and his word are inseparable as mentioned in John 1.1. 1, 1. Hence, if God were to lie, it would contradict his very nature and character. This morning, I want us to focus on the main text for today which is in the book of Joshua chapter 1, beginning at verse 1 to verse 8. And I want to read it for you here. It says, Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, cross this Jordan, you and all his people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you. Just as I spoke to Moses from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, as far as the great sea towards the setting of the sun, will be your territory. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. For you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all that the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. So that you may have success Wherever you go, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, I just want to give you a background of what the setting is in the scripture. We see here Moses, one of the most successful leaders leading Israel, is dead. And in his absence, God is about to choose Joshua to lead the people of Israel into the promised land of Canaan. Now, Joshua knows that this is a huge responsibility. As he knew that it is very difficult for him to replace a leader of the stature of Moses. Now, let's look at some of Moses's credentials. You know, the Bible says that Moses was the most humble man on the earth. It says he was a leader who was full of wisdom. Numbers 12, 6 says that Moses had a relationship, a personal relationship with God. Because it says that God spoke to him as he would speak to a friend. We also see Moses fasted for 40 days and 40 nights without food without water. He was among the few to whom God revealed his glory. Now, when God gave Joshua 
this huge responsibility of leading the people into the promised land. I believe that Joshua would have battled in his mind with fear and anxiety. He was also aware that the Israelites were not a very easy people to handle. They were ungrateful people. You know, the Bible calls them stiff necked. And that's why if you read the scripture, there are three occasions in which God is telling Joshua, be strong and courageous. God knew that Joshua's challenge was not the battle that he had to fight with the enemies, but the real battle were his own people. God had promised to deliver Israel from bondage and slavery and take them into the promised land of Canaan. You know, if you read scripture, it says that Israelites were one who witnessed the glory of God and witnessed marvelous miracles. In the book of Exodus 13, 21, it says that the very presence of God led them in a cloud by day and fire by night. Exodus 14, 21, it says that God parted the Red Sea so that the people of Israel could cross over the sea. Exodus chapter 16, verse 4, it says, when the congregation complained against Moses in the wilderness because of their hunger, God even provided manna from heaven. However, in spite of experiencing the supernatural presence of God, the people of Israel murmured and they grumbled. God knew that Joshua would need help to fulfill this huge task. And so God makes him a promise. And so we read in scripture in Joshua chapter 1 verse 3, after God has given Joshua this whole mandate to lead the people of Israel into the promised land, this is what God is telling Joshua. He says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 3, he says, every place where you put your soul, I will give it to you. Look at this promise. He says in verse 5, no man will be able to stand before you. I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. These promises must have been very reassuring for Joshua. And that may have given him a confidence to take up this task. As God was with Moses, as God was with Joshua, he promises to be with us also in this time of uncertainty. Beloved, I want to tell you this morning, all we need to do is trust in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, it says this, For as many as the, the promises of God in him, they are yes, therefore also through him is our amen to the glory of God through us. God has fulfilled every promise in Jesus. But this morning, I want us to focus our attention on Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Here we see three important truths that God is giving Joshua to succeed in this great mission. And I want to read that scripture to you. Joshua 1 8, this is what God's word says. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. So the first truth is this, that we need to always confess the word of God. It's very important to keep speaking the word of God, even the most difficult of times. Scripture says, let the word of God not depart from your mouth. When we are faced with challenging situations in our lives, what is our confession? We get discouraged. We often speak futile and unfruitful words. Instead, let us confess God's word, God's promise with authority that God has given us. When God spoke to Joshua, he knew that the Canaanites were not his real enemies, but his own people, Israelites, were his greatest challenge because of their unbelief. This could only be overcome by Joshua trusting God and his word. You know, beloved, very often we blame our situations. We blame our circumstances. And sometimes we believe people around us. But most often it is ourselves. Mark 11 verse 23. It says, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain be removed, and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, 
but believes that these things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. We need to understand and we need to speak the word of God in authority. Our confession is very important. Even in this situation, what is our confession? Proverbs 18 verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Beloved, there is power in our confession. We need to feed our confession with the promises of God. Let's not resign to the situation that is around us. When we believe what we speak, it will happen. We read in the book of Genesis chapter 1. God brought forth the entire creation into existence by his very breath. God's word brings life. And when we speak the word and the promises of God, even in our difficult and dead situations, God's word and God's promise will bring the life into those dead situations. The second thing that we need to see is that we need to meditate on God's word. Meditation is thinking. Meditation is pondering. Meditation is reflecting on God's word. Thinking about it in order that it becomes meaningful. We ought to remain in God's word. Scripture says, meditate on the word of God day and night. You know, Romans 10, 17 says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. The word of God brings faith for us to face every challenging situations in our life. When we keep pondering on the word, the word of God brings faith. And when faith comes, fear vanishes away. We are able to believe God for things that look impossible. But if we continue to think about the situation around us, fear can take over. We see in Numbers 13, you know, there's an entire account of Moses preparing an entire team of 12 spies to go up and do a recce of the land of Canaan. Well, this team of 12 spies went, scoped the land, and they came back with a report. But it's very important to see the two different kind of reports that two different teams gave. In Numbers 13 verse 28, we see there's one group that says, Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The city is fortified and very large. Moreover, we see the descendants of Anak there. The descendants of Anak were huge statured people. You know, if you read scripture, it says that they were a normal height of eight or nine feet. And so this is the report that one team is getting. It says, that the enemies are huge and we are looking like grasshoppers and that report brought fear and that report brought discouragement. Now on the other hand, we also see a second report and here is Joshua and Caleb bringing a report to Moses and this is what scripture says in Numbers 13, 30. It says, then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. The first report brought fear. The second report brought faith. They went to the same land. They saw the same fortified cities. They saw the same people, yet the responses were different. Joshua and Caleb believed that though the enemies were like giants, yet they were able to defeat them. They were very confident that God would fight their battle. And that's why in Numbers 14, 8 and 9, it says, If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. They had a confidence that because God had promised them the land, that God will give it to them. A land which flows with milk and honey. The Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Two things which come out very strongly. It says, the Lord will bring us into this land. The Lord is with us. And therefore, beloved, it's very important that we meditate. It's important what we think 
because Proverbs 23, 7 says, as we think in our hearts, so will we be. What you think will determine who you become and your decisions will ultimately lead you to your destiny. I want to tell you, beloved, do not limit God according to your thinking. God is far bigger. And in the midst of this entire COVID-19, let's not meditate upon the situation or the reports that are around us, but let's look to our God because he has promised us and he is faithful and he said that he will be with us and he alone will fight our battle. I quote a preacher who I recently heard and this is what he said. He said, don't tell God how big your problem is, but rather tell your problem how big your God is. Amen. I want to repeat that once again. He said, don't tell God how big your problem is, but rather tell your problem how big your God is. The third thing that I want to say here, the third truth is obedience to the word of God. The first one was the confession of God's word. The second one was the meditation of God's word, the thinking of God's word. And the third one is the obedience of the word of God. Always obey God's word. Although it's not always the most easiest thing to do, especially in the situation that we are faced in right now. But scripture says, be careful to do according to all that is written in God's word. You know, Genesis chapter 26, it's a beautiful account. And it says here that there was a famine in the land of Gerar. And so everyone is fleeing from Gerar and they are going up to Egypt. There doesn't seem to be any logical reason why one should stay back in Gerar. But here is God telling Isaac to stay put and not move. Don't go to Egypt, but be right here in Gerar. And Genesis 26, 3, it says, Dwell in this land, God is telling Isaac, and I will be with you and I will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. You know, the focus is on the eye. The eye is not us, but the eye here is God. And God is saying that he will be with Isaac. Genesis 26, 3, 6, it says, so Isaac obeyed God. It was not easy for Isaac to obey God in a situation like this, but he takes God at his word because he trusts that God is faithful and God is the God of promise. And so Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And against all odds, Isaac values God's word and he stays back in Gerar. And it says now there's a famine in the land, but Isaac sows in that land. Beloved, when we obey the word of God, God rewards us. And let's see what God did for Isaac here in Genesis 26, verse 12 and 13. Scripture says that now Isaac sowed in that land and he reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him and the man became rich and continued to grow rich until he became very wealthy. Beloved, this is a land of famine. And in famine, Isaac is sowing in that land. And scripture says that he reaped in the same year, not a 30 fold, not a 60 fold, but a hundredfold. And when we read scripture and we understand what is hundredfold, it talks about the best yield that is possible. The best yield is hundredfold. And so in a land of famine, Isaac is sowing and reaping in the same year a hundredfold. Genesis 26 verse 24. And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you. I will multiply your descendants. 
for my servant Abraham's sake. So beloved, I want to just tell you this morning, I want to bring us back to that scripture that in the midst of these difficult times, in the midst of these trying times, let's get back to God's word. Let's get back to God's promises. As he said in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. And I want to read that once again. And this is what he says. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Three keys. That God is giving us here. And it is all to do with his word. Beloved, confess his word over your situation. Meditate upon his word, not the problem. And be careful to walk on his word and obey his word. Because the scripture says that when we do that, our way will be prosperous and we will have success. So this morning, I just want to tell you, beloved, that our God is a God of promise. Our God is a God who's faithful. He said in his word that he is with us. And even right now, he is with us. Even in this most difficult time of our lives. He has promised in his word that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. So this morning, I believe, let's find encouragement through his word. Let his word bring faith in this time of uncertainty that we are faced with. Let's close in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you this morning for your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word brings life we thank you, Lord, that your word brings hope. We thank you, Lord, that your word brings faith, Lord. And in the midst of all the uncertainty that is around us, Lord, Lord, we believe that you are a God of promise. We believe that you are a God who is faithful. We believe that what you have said in your word, you will do it, Lord Jesus. And so, Father, we just trust in you. And Lord, we believe that you are in control of every situation that we are faced with, even right now, Lord. And so, God, we just pray that you will just bring forth, Lord, your promises into our life. Lord, even in these dead situations that we are faced with right now, Lord, I pray that let your word breathe life into those situations also. God, we just pray for your protection over every family that is represented here. Lord, that you will cover us with your precious blood. Father, we just pray that your presence will always go before us, Lord. We thank you that we are not alone, that you are with us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we can call upon you anytime. And you're always willing to hear us, Lord. We also thank you, Lord, that you're a God of provision. And Lord, we just pray that you will meet us at the point of our need, Lord. That none of us will lack any good thing, Lord. But Lord, you will bless us in an abundance that we may be a blessing to others, Lord. And so, Lord, we just pray, Lord, in these days that lie ahead, may we continue to draw closer to you, Lord. May we continue to meditate upon your word, Lord. And Lord, we pray that, Lord, let your word bring faith, Lord Jesus. So we thank you once again. Lord, we speak a blessing upon every home, upon every family, upon every individual, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father. And we say we love you, Lord. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I believe that today's word has been a blessing to you. Amen.